Hey guys, it's John here from Sonic Drive Studio with a very, very cool product demo and review. I'm very excited to present to you the Amp Central Reactive Load by Red 7 Amplification. Just take a look at this awesome piece of gear. It looks so cool. If you're familiar with the channel, you're probably aware of the fact that I never ever mic up an actual cabinet. I always use impulse responses with a reactive load. And that's a method that I strongly believe in. And it just works so well for me for a bunch of different reasons. For years now, I've been using my trusty Fractal Audio LB2 reactive load, a very solid piece of kit with a great tone. But for the past year or so, I have been looking for something new, a new reactive load to satisfy my needs and just to switch things up a little bit, but also to be able to use something that you guys can actually buy when you like it, because the Fractal Audio is never in stock. But wouldn't it be awesome if it also happened to be a superior load in terms of features and sound slash feel? That would be quite something, wouldn't it? Because the reactive load is such an important part of the chain to get that proper recorded guitar tone. If you're not yet familiar with the term reactive load or load box, Here's a quick and simple explanation for you. Normally, a guitar tube amplifier has to be connected to a guitar speaker cabinet when you're playing through it. Otherwise, you obviously won't have any sound, but there's also a very good chance that you will damage your amplifier. So the amplifier needs a proper load in order for it to function properly. For applications like silent or direct recording, a proper reactive load is the answer because you can connect this to your amplifier and then to your mixer or DAW without needing an actual guitar speaker cabinet connected to it. So it basically eliminates the entire guitar speaker cabinet if you wanted to. And then you can also load your impulse responses into this, which are basically speaker simulations. So the Amp Central by Red7 is a reactive load that sounds and feels as if you're actually connected to a real guitar cabinet. Now this is important because with a real cabinet, there's actually an interaction between the amplifier and the cabinet. The Amp Central aims to recreate that effect quite naturally and accurately with a fully analog reactive load. During the development, the guys from Red7 Amplification spent a lot of time working on the sound and feel of the fully analog reactive load signal path to make sure that it's the best that it could possibly be. And I think it shows and you will see that in a minute. But the Amp Central is capable of so much more. As I said, the Amp Central also features IR loading for the XLR outputs. You can load up to 16 impulse responses on this unit and it does come preloaded with custom made Red7 impulse responses. Of course, you can also load your own impulse responses in here, which is a very easy process. And one of the other major features of this load is the stereo effects loop, a very cool and also kind of unique feature for a product like this. You can use this to add stereo effects after an amplifier that does not have an effects loop, for example. So why not just try that right away? One quick note, for all the demos in this video, I'm gonna try this unit as how I would normally use it in my setup. So I'm gonna use my own favorite impulse responses. I really wanna see what this baby can do in my own familiar setup. And I will be using York Audio impulse responses for this purpose. So let's start with some clean tones on my Ibanez 9 string through my Wong's 2204HW amplifier. It's basically a hand-wired 50 watt JCM800 clone with EL34s in the power section. And that amplifier does not have an effects loop, so I will be running my Line 6 HX effects through the loop of the Amp Central with some stereo effects, a parallel compressor, some stereo delay, and some stereo reverb as well. And for this tone, I loaded an IR directly into the Amp Central, which was a very easy process, by the way. And it's the Mix01 file from the York 212M65 Creamback package. And from the Amp Central, I'm going into my interface via the XLR outputs. Here we go.
And now let's also take a quick listen to that guitar tone, but in an isolated setting, so without the backing track on. Here we go. That was great! I really loved the sound of those stereo effects on my amplifier. So this device definitely lets you expand the capabilities of your amplifier. Very cool. And you don't even need two amplifiers in order to get some stereo effects. Now how I would normally run my reactive load is with the internal IRs bypassed and then I'd run the raw and pure amplifier signal from the line out into my Axe effects or DAW where I apply the IR processing. So that's what we're going to try out now. And we're going to switch from the XLR outputs to the line out jack output on the back. And by the way, that line out on the back also has its own dedicated line out level control. Very handy. So now let's start with the good stuff, the dirty tones. We're going to try some crunch tones with my Gibson Les Paul Classic into my Friedman Double J Jr. on the BE channel. I'm using an IR from the York Audio FDMN412 package and I'm on the V30 speaker option and the Mix04 file to be exact. Let's go ahead and check that out right now. Here we go. Awesome. Let's also check that out in an isolated setting. Here we go. Damn, that sounded great. But not only does it sound great, it also feels very good under the fingers. It really reacts and responds as how you'd expect from your own familiar tube amplifiers. Every reactive load that I've tried sounds and feels slightly different, but this is definitely one of the very best reactive loads that I've ever tried. I'm very impressed. Now let's get a bit heavier, shall we? With my Mesa Boogie dual rectifier and my ESP LTD EC1000T full thickness Eclipse with EMGs into a York Audio MES412 OSIR, the mix 10 file to be exact. The same setup as before, so from the line out into my interface where I apply the IR. Here we go. Awesome, that was great. 
Now let's also check out that tone very quickly in an isolated setting. Here we go. Awesome sauce, loved it. You guys want more, right? I know I do. So let's go a little bit lower with my ESP LTD EC401B baritone guitar with EMGs in it through my EVH 5153 50 watt EL34 amplifier on the high gain red channel, of course, through another York Audio IR, this time from the 5153 412 VH20 package, mix 04 to be precise. Here we go, let's rock out with some lower riffs. nice and thick. Now let's also check out those tones in an isolated setting. Here we go. Oh yeah, another amazing tone. One thing that I'm really noticing here is that each amplifier so far really has its own sound and sonic signature going on. I love that. Now the reactive load definitely has to do something with that, but of course the IRs that I'm choosing as well. Every piece of the puzzle, so to speak, seems to be working very well together, so that's great. Okay, one more clip. This time an 8-string clip with my ESP LTD SC608B 8-string baritone guitar, the Stefan Carpenter signature model with the Steph Fishmans in it, and that will go into my Engel Fireball 25 amplifier, a very cool high gain amp, into a York Audio ZILA 212 BLNDIR, the Mix 01 file to be precise. Let's check it out right now.
Awesome. And now let's check out a little snippet with the isolated guitars. Here we go. Very cool indeed. So I can definitely conclude that the Amp Central can handle a wide range of amplifiers with ease. Which considering my situation with all these amplifiers is a great thing, so I'm loving it. Let's take a quick look at the unit to see what else we have. On the left side of the front panel we have the IR selector control along with the LEDs that indicate on which bank and slot you are. The IR choice is MIDI selectable by the way via the MIDI input on the back, very cool. Then we have the input level for the DSP to make sure you're reaching optimal levels before going into the DAC converters. And there are also clip indicators, very handy as well. Then we have the headphones level control along with the headphones in and an aux in as well. And something else interesting, a switch that lets you select between the reactive load and the resistive load. I'm not entirely sure yet why anybody would want to choose the resistive load function over the reactive load function, as that sounds vastly superior in my opinion. But still, the option is there if you want it. On the back we have all the basic connections such as the line out, with the dedicated level control, the XLR outs with a ground lift switch, the stereo effects loop, the MIDI connectors and the USB connection to hook up to your PC for loading your own impulse responses. It's a very sturdy box, not super heavy, but it feels like it was made with a lot of love and care by the folks of Red7 Amplification. Just go to red7-amplification.com for more information. I'm absolutely in love with this reactive load and I think that I will be using this in many many more videos in the future on the channel. It sounds great, it feels great and it has all the features that you'd need from such a device. It's just perfect for my setup, I love it and that's my honest opinion. That's all for this video, I really hope you enjoyed it. Please drop a like and a subscribe as that would really help me out. I just really appreciate it. And also let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on the Amp Central by Red7. What did you think of the guitar tones in this demo? Let me know. And you can also follow Sonic Drive Studio on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you very soon. Cheers!